All right. Well, you know, I had to weigh in eventually because I used to watch Daily Wire and I used to watch Steven Crowder. I mean, I still occasionally watch Steven Crowder. I mean, I don't anymore because he's not on anywhere. But, uh, you know, I, I see this stuff, this stuff here, and, and I see everybody arguing and who's right, who's wrong. I don't know. It depends on your point of view, I guess. But, you know what? I'll give you mine. So, I've kind of put everything together here, and uh, I wanted to sort of just kind of encapsulate everything as best as I could in a short version. So, we'll start with the contract. So, well, not a contract, it's a term sheet. So, several months ago, back in, I think they said it was October, November time frame, they were doing their... Uh, well, Steven Crowder was getting ready to get out of his his contract with the Blaze. Now, Steven Crowder is a big personality. He's got a lot of viewers. He's got a lot of followers. Uh, no one knows for sure how many, but we do know that when he did his uh, live stream for the election, he got, I think, around 500,000 live views. That's, that's pretty significant, you know. Um, a lot of people do not even come close to that. I think that was something, that was a number that was kind of a big deal, honestly. So, you know, 500,000 live views, that rivals a lot of TV, <laughs> you know, just regular TV viewing. Um, it, I think it beats out a lot of live TV viewing, honestly. So, you know, that that's a pretty big deal. And, um, you know, if, if that's the kind of thing he has frequently, I keep saying, you know, like, it's like, it's like Jordan, Jordan Peterson, you know, like everything he says is bloody full of nonsense and just, you know, in, in Canadian uh, dribble. That's all it is. Mostly it's probably because he's in charge of the patriarchy. But anyway, that, that aside, uh, the non-binding term sheet here is basically, um, and it's weird they made this thing confidential because it's not, but at any rate, um, we'll go over this real quick and just kind of go over the kind of the raw deal that he was getting. Now, Daily Wire said that he was, a, like, the, the guy there, the Jeremy uh, Boring guy, uh, which I find the, the God King thing shtick to be very juvenile and weird. I don't like it. It's, I, it. It turns me off immediately when people act, say stuff like that. It's just like, what's wrong with you? But that aside, he, um, he basically said that, yeah, Crowder was a good friend of his. He made this video here, which is where I'm getting this contract from, um, responding to Steven Crowder. Now, they started these negotiations October, November. Apparently, they didn't go very well. The talks kind of just ended in November. Um, Steven Crowder then did a video in January this year, obviously, a couple, like a week ago. Um, and he called out Big Con, as he called it, right? Uh, now, he's he didn't mention Daily Wire specifically. The contract here it had a lot of... Um, it had basically a lot of things... Uh, blacked out, you know, um, what's the word, uh, redacted, basically. So he wasn't showing, you know, who it was. I mean, based on the things that were blacked out, you couldn't say, like, oh, just because there's a black box of this size, it must be Daily Wire LLC, because they could have written that anyway, or DW here. They could have written that in different ways. So there's a lot of, you know, People are trying to say, like, he was intending to do this from the start. Well, I mean, he didn't He didn't actually call out Daily Wire immediately. Daily Wire outed themselves. They said, yeah, this was our contract. And they could have been doing that preemptively because, well, there's a lot of people that have seen Daily Wire's contracts, and they could have said, yeah, that's Daily Wire. That's one of their term sheets or contracts or whatever they want to call it. Um, but they, they said, and, you know, Steven Crowder has said, and Jeremy Boring have said, yeah, we were friends, you know, we, we were just, we were doing, we were, we were friends doing business. Now, here's the interesting thing about that. What I find interesting is this, con this term sheet, I'll, I'll, I gotta stop calling it a contract, but this, this term sheet here, uh, this isn't something you give to your friend, right? Uh, Steven Crowder apparently asked for like a hundred something million, not 50 million. So... They gave him, and Jeremy Boring admitted he, they, they lowballed him. They lowballed the hell out of him. Uh, they weren't giving him what they actually think he's worth. And they also gave him just kind of a generic term sheet here, which we'll go over. But um, 
starting off here, you know, they said, you know, we gave them 50 million, right? So their fee, what they call it, the fee, is basically what they're gonna pay Stephen Crowder. And they said 50 million initial term for four years, and they'll pay it in monthly installments. They also have uh, a two year optional renewal for Daily Wire. If they want to renew it, they can. And that would be another 25 million, which, you know, makes sense because half of four years is two years, so half of the fee of 50 million is 25, okay? So essentially he would be getting something around $12.5 million per year paid in monthly amounts, in monthly increments, and that's what he'd be getting. It's, that's, a, a, if it was all going to Steven Crowder, that's, pretty, that's a pretty, pretty hefty sum, right? If uh, you know they're doing all the production, they're doing all the work, that's a pretty good pay, right? Well, the next line here is what kind of makes that not so good because they say, Crowder will bear the burden of production, including all costs associated therewith on all the contact contemplated therein. So he's doing all the production work. He's got his own staff. He's got his own productions uh, headquarters, all that stuff. He doesn't have to move to, I think it's Tennessee is where they're based out of now. Um, and that's, that's what Stephen Crowder would want. But that's the thing is he's responsible for paying for all of that. So when you figure, I think he's got something around 200 employees or something like that, or maybe it's 50. I, I can't remember how much either way. If you figure paying, if he pays all of his people, I would assume close to 70, 80, at least 70 or 80,000 a year. More, some of them probably significantly more. I would assume he pays like Dave Landau more than that. Um, let's say on average like 100,000 per person uh, times 20 people. That's uh, what, about 2 million right off, right there. So 2 million a year. So take that 2 million off the 50 million. Um, and there he's, he's got 48 or sorry, off the 12 million that hit, he's got about 10 million a year. But still has to deal with the lawyers, the property costs, the costs of, you know, all the utilities, all that other stuff, like everything that he needs, all the trips that they got to make and figure in like, ins like health insurance for all those people, all the other costs. There's, there's a lot of costs to business. And this is actually another point that, um, the Daily Wire video response kept trying to say that Steven Crowder doesn't know business. Steven Crowder's been do running this company that he's got, doing the business for like years, like 10 years now, right? Like he's had the show. And yes, he's been under the umbrella of like CRTV or The Blaze, but he's been running the rest of the business. <laughs> it's not just like he's been doing He's letting everybody else run things for him, run things for him. He's been running it and he just has kind of like a producer or sponsor in a way. Um, that That's it. Like he's, he's really got full control over everything. He's doing, he does what he wants and that's, that's it. He's, he's got his own business. Uh, if he wanted to start a company probably tomorrow and just be like, Hey, uh, go ahead and sign up for our whatever uh, people would do it. If he wanted to start putting videos on rumble, people would watch him. You know, he would he would make a good about a bit of money. I'm I'm almost positive of that. All that being said, um, th there's just a lot of the things that Daily Wire says don't match with reality. It seems like all the people there are kind of towing a similar line, interestingly enough. Uh, whereas the only person defending Steven Crowder, other than his fans, is Steven Crowder. He doesn't have other people from his company that are all like, oh, let's talk trash about the Daily Wire, because that wasn't what they did from the start. Daily Wire started the trash talking publicly. <laughs> uh, Steven Crowder's initial video was just him saying, yeah, Big Con is really screwing over the little guys, which if these are their typical term sheets. Yeah, they are. Now, we'll get into the recordings and all that stuff, but first let's finish going over the term sheet here. So, um, Next portion, yep, it's got the fee. Okay, so, <laughs> so revenue collection. Daily Wire will have the exclusive right to realize revenue in connection with all of Crowder's content and brand. So, whatever Steven Crowder makes for his money, he's, he doesn't get to know that necessarily. Kind of like what he's got with the Blaze right now. He doesn't know exactly how much he's been making. They won't tell him. They won't tell him how many people signed up for him specifically. Um, and all of his content and all of his, everything that's, it's got his name on it. All of that goes to Daily Wire and then they get to give him the fee. So, 
you know, if they make more, I think they would make significantly more off them than 50 million. Honestly, that's that's pretty low of a number, I think, over four years. I think that you probably make that in maybe a year or two, not, um, you know, four years, but that aside, especially with the stuff they're asking for him. But uh, this is the daily, he's gonna make a one and a half hour audio video show of a quality and kind consistent with the one he currently produces which is four days a week at 192 episodes a year, and he gets four days off, or four weeks off. Four weeks off isn't a lot. That's, I mean, for a lot of places, 30 days of leave time is pretty normal. You get about a month of leave, um, paid leave. And then uh, you also get, but this isn't necessarily paid leave. This is more like you just have that time off. You still have to make all those other shows. And there's kind of a lot that goes into it, I believe. Um, I mean, he does take generally a couple months off every year so to kind of recharge. So I, I would see him definitely not liking that. I mean, a lot of shows, like, I mean, I, I've been watching a lot of uh, Adam Savage from Mythbusters, and he said that, you know, it was, it was nearly impossible to do shows at the rate they were doing them, where they only had about a month off every year. And he said it was impossible. We had to keep morale up by giving people more time off. So I, I see this as being very, very, um, very restrictive and a good way to drain people's souls, pretty much. So, there's that. It also says that it has to be of the quality and kind, consistent what he show what he currently produces. It, how do you? It's very vague language for a contract or a term sheet here, because how do you how do you define quality and the kind consistent? You know, I mean, obviously he's going to make similar shows to what he's making. Sure, you can you can argue that, but quality wise, I mean. How do, you, how do you say... whatever. <laughs> so they say that the episodes are to be filmed th in the studio daily, Monday through Thursday. Guess what he normally does. Uh, one hour outside the paywall, normal. 30. Well, actually, I think he does more outside the wire, uh, paywall right now. And then 30 minutes inside a Daily Wire Plus paywall. Again, not all that different from what he does now. Or what he had been doing. Uh, and it says he may pre, pre may bank or pre-record a limited number of episodes upon Daily Wire's reasonable discretion. So he still has to get permission from them to do whatever it is that he's going to do. Uh, kind of weird, because sometimes Steven Crowder doesn't always do just daily shows. Sometimes he goes off and does other stuff, like he'll do Change My Minds and stuff. And those are videos that a lot of people like. And, you know, it, I think most people are fine with that, so... I mean, they seem to be anyway, because he continues to be making fairly decent strides. Uh, we'll move on to the next part here. All right. Uh, oh, and then <laughs> this goes on to talk about, so in addition to that daily stuff, he also has, in his normal stuff, he also has monthly, quarterly, and annual requirements. Now, these monthly, quarterly, and annual requirements are kind of ridiculous, right? Monthly, and he has to do a 90-minute all-access live member. That's, that's addition, addition to his regular shows. Uh, he has to make sure he reads all ads and prom prom promotions, blah, promos, that is requested by Daily Wire for the same. Quarterly, in addition to the monthly and daily requirements, he also has to make uh, one major Daily Wire Plus promo video and photo shoot coordinated by Daily Wire, which will be separate. And then, uh, and he has to do a backstage episode or major live event, whatever that is. Uh, and then annually, in addition to all that, a feature-length entertainment special and reasonable promotion of the same, and, such as a, a stand-up comedy special or four-hour, half-hour episodes of the same. So they're expecting him to do comedy specials, which is something you don't do outside of... So if you look at stand-up comedians, they, they will typically do, you know, they'll go on tour, right? They'll go on tour, kind of tweak their act as they go, and then by the end of it, they do a comedy special, which is just everything that they've kind of, you know, know that's going to work and they put that all into a special, and there you go. And they do that at the end, one, so they can perfect their act, and two, because if the special's out there, who really wants to go see them live? It's gonna be like close to the same thing, right? So, yeah, it's, that's a, a really weird ask. And we'll, and I understand, I know people are gonna say, well, yeah, but he could change, he could have asked for different stuff in the contract, we'll get to that. Uh, and here's Jeremy talking about whatever he's gonna do. 
<laughs> and then he's got additional content here that made anything they additionally may mutually agree to create, they'll pay 15,000 per shoot day for such content. Okay, great. Uh, this is where it kind of starts to get egregious though, is this part here for ad reads, promos, ad reads and promo reads. Oh, also the back catalog. So all of his old stuff, including his past episodes of Let Arthur Crowder, will be uh, given to the Daily Wire during the term. And, okay. So basically all the stuff that they didn't even create, they want to be able to monetize as well. So, kind of kind of screwy there. Pretty screwy, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, anyway, so for ad reads and promos, Daily Wire will have the exclusive right to sell ads on Crowder content on all platforms, channels, website, apps, widgets, pages, and lists owned, branded, or controlled by the Daily Wire, and on any any Crowder owned or controlled social channels, emails, well, email lists, websites, etc. Uh, and the remuneration for such ads, including the fee. So what they're saying here is they're gonna basically take anything he has, all the, all the money they get from advertisements, all the money they get from anything else of his, they're going to take the money from, and he doesn't get any, he doesn't get a penny from any of that. He gets nothing additional from it. All of his money is upfront in the fee. So it doesn't matter if they make $300 million off him in four years, he's still only gonna get 50. That's all there ever is. Because all they care about is themselves, essentially. And you know what, that's that's fine if they're assuming all the risk. But the thing is, they're not. They're not assuming all the risk. And we'll <laughs> we'll kind of go over that here again in, in a bit as well. So Crowder will read any ad copy and promo copies requested by the Daily Wire. Uh, the Crowder will have the right to disprove of particular ad sponsors, but only not more than 10%. He can't disprove of more than 10%. So what, the weird thing about that is, Let's say that he's only got five sponsors that are going to put ads on, that are willing to put ads up on his uh, on his uh, videos. Uh, he go, he doesn't even get to just he doesn't even get to say no to one of them because that would be twenty percent. So he basically has to read all of the ads. He would need to have at least ten sponsors, and he'd be able to get one of them and say no, not to that one. So that's pretty weird. And also considering Crowder has got a lot of sponsors on his own, so he doesn't he doesn't need that for himself either. The guy's got sponsors. He's got a bunch of places that have sponsored him uh, that are willing to sponsor him. So I, I don't even know why they would, <laughs> I don't know why he would want to go with another company, honestly. Uh, Daily Wire will, will not have the right to sell ads on behalf of companies for which Crowder himself owns. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Um. Daily Wire will have the right to, oh, here's the ownership clause. This one is awful. Daily Wire will own all of the content contemplated to be created herein and will own all Daily Wire created channels and brands created by the Daily Wire during the term. Daily Wire can exploit these channels, brands, and content in perpetuity at its sole discretion. So basically everything he makes <coughs> and goes on Daily Wire, they get to have forever. Always. There is no, like, all of the stuff, like they can make money off his videos for years and years and years. And that's, that's, it's theirs forever. Crowder doesn't have to get anything from it. So after he makes these videos and his four year term is up, uh, they could still make money off him, like forever. Yeah, that's not right. Um, and I, I, because you think about that, like movies, for example, people that act in movies are, are you know, that are, they, they get paid royalties, Even like music too. You get paid royalties. If, you know, you're, as your stuff continues to make money, you get royalties. You know, you get payment from the continued success of whatever it is you did. Uh, in this case, <coughs> doesn't even count, doesn't get that at all. At all, that's that's ridiculous. And then they have the ad adaptation rights, where they have the right to adapt and monetize anything Crowder says or writes on his podcast, his social media, both Daily Wire owned and Crowder's personal channels, books, or media hits. Uh, just everything they get to just do whatever they want with everything of his. That's it's insane. Like. You can't agree to that. If you're Steven Crowder, you absolutely cannot agree to that. I don't think, like, nobody should agree to that. Um, Daily Wire will maintain the exclusive rights to create and sell Crowder and Crowder content brand merchandise. I mean, the, Crowder sells t-shirts and, and mugs and all kinds of stuff, and they're saying that he can't do that anymore. He, they can do whatever they want. They can sell it, and he can't. Uh, email lists... All of his email lists, they can't, he can't, he has to give those up. 
so that they can sell the, basically they'll sell your email address if you're subscribed to them. And that's it, like that's ridiculous. Social media management, they can, they get the right to manage all of his, uh, well manage and monetize all of his social media. Like they get to tell him what he, get, what he can and can't put on there. That's crazy, that's, that's just absolutely crazy. And uh, that actually gets worse coming up here where it talks about the penalties for various things. If I can find them. Oh, so there is a disability clause in here. So in the event of temporary disability or serious illness, uh, the fee will be reduced on a pro rata basis. So it doesn't necessarily mean that um, he he won't have to he doesn't he doesn't get to like you know be disabled and get and just get paid the full amount but they will compensate him at least somewhat if he gets injured but that doesn't do anything for his for his staff uh, uh trying to find the next part of the contract all right, so here's reductions here. So if he doesn't do any of the daily, if he misses some daily content, if he misses one day of daily content, so per instance of missing either a, an episode of the show or an ad and or an ad read or promo, he gets a $100,000 reduction in his pay. So if he misses an episode and say there's four ads in there, he loses $100,000 for that show and he loses $400,000 of ads. That's a lot. <laughs> That's $500,000 of that, of that uh, pay just for missing one episode. Like something comes up, that's what happens? Nah, that's ridiculous. That is a ridiculous fee. Um, another thing, if he fails to do the monthly content in any month or any quarterly content in any quarter, $250,000. That is, that is a lot. I mean, he could lose a lot of money just for missing one thing. That's that's crazy. Guy gets sick and he's got a... He can't take a break. That's crazy. Um, ad drops. Okay, so here's something that was kind of... I think this was supposed to be in his favor. If Crowder is boycotted or dropped by more than 50% of his then-existent ex advertising partners, that is 50% of the revenue from those partners... And the company's not able to replace them within 90 days, the fee will be reduced by 25% until such time as the ad revenue has been restored for a period of 90 days. So this says that he'll basically get paid at 75% of the fee, which is his pay. He'll get paid at a 75% of his rate. He'll still get three quarters of what he's owed um, for up to 90 days. If he gets dropped by, you know, someone. Uh, content strikes. If any of the major platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, is a content strike other than a company-wide content strike. Uh, if the company's not a result of 90 days, feel reduced by 25% from that point forward. So you typically lose your ads if you get content strikes. So he would lose 25% and 25%, so he would lose 50%. Interesting. That's that's a lot. <laughs> he would lose half of his, his pay because he got a counter strike. And that, that happens a lot. Steven Crowder. Which is why you have also point out here you two, not <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Bono. Anyway, no. <laughs> they have that's a lot like he gets he gets content strikes a lot like they just do because and the, and the point is that YouTube applies policies unfairly and we see that all the time not with a Steven Crowder we see it with a lot of people getting videos lately especially that are just being you know their videos are being not shadow banned but like demonetized or put in the age restricted categories like that kind of thing happens a lot and uh, there's nothing you can do about it in like almost all cases so, is what it is. But uh, here, this one is the worst one. 
So if he gets banned on any major platform, such as YouTube or Facebook or Apple Podcasts or Spotify, he will the fee will be reduced by some amount. So it already said up there, if he lost his sponsorship with, that, with whoever, he would lose 25%. For YouTube, he's going to lose 20%. For Apple Podcasts, he's going to lose 20%. This is a very vague and very difficult to understand like what their intent is with this term sheet. So what you're seeing is, you know, okay, what's the difference between a ban and him not being able to, you know, play ads on something? If he's not able to play ads on it, he's basically banned, right? Um, if he gets a content strike, he's also going to get banned. So does he lose 25% in addition to 45% on YouTube? If, that's the, if he gets a content strike and gets banned, like, you got to kind of spell these things out, right? But... Overall here, let's see if he gets Alex jones and gets taken off everything. I mean, he basically loses 40% of his total fee. Like, he only have about 60% of that $12 million for the year. And it says this stuff, it says further on down here that it gets reset every year. Um, that's still a lot of money. And it, who knows if the ban would be lifted the following year. And he's still, like I said, got to pay those people. He's got to pay his 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 workers. He's got to pay his staff. It's almost like this is made just to squeeze the money out of him and prevent him from being able to work. Like this is very restrictive for him. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I really wanted to go over as far as as far as the as far as the video itself and like terms of it, the the term sheet itself. So. We saw a bunch of people like Candace Owens go on Tim Pool, right? And she she just she just tried to rip into into Steven Crowder, right? And they found out on the show they looked up and found oh well there's uh, he registered a website called Stop Big Con back in December. It's like okay, well people tried to say that that proved that he planned out all of this stuff. That's what Candace Owens was saying was oh he must have planned all this out. He recorded Jeremy Boring's con uh, Jeremy Boring's conversation with him where they talked about family blah 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 so here's kind of the thing with steven crowder is he he say, he tends to take business not as just business he, he makes business personal right that's not necessarily a bad thing because tim pool for example does business very differently he said that several times um some people don't like to make business like corporate faceless business right they like to know their employees they like to know who they're hiring who they're working with Lauren Chen, for example, was a great example. She came out and was saying that, you know, she was offered actually more than what the Daily Wire offered Stephen Crowder by Stephen Crowder. They wanted, she, he, he saw what she had, saw the potential that she had, and he wanted to hire her. And uh, he offered her like, I think she said like 150, and it might have been the same or more than, I can't remember, but it was, it was a very large number that I believe was more than what the Daily Wire offered her. And she and she said no, which is you know her right to do. But she actually felt bad about saying no because you know she realized that Steven Crowder does not engage in these business deals lightly. He 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 likes to bring people in and considers them family. Now that being said, you do have people like Sven Computer, uh, the guy that was a comedian that played piano a lot. I can't remember who he was. He got rid of him, and that's because that guy had a lot of problems. I think he had some drug issues and stuff. Um, Doc A. Jared, he got rid of him as well, and those guys are not allowed to talk about any of it, and there's probably a good reason for it, honestly. It's probably best. In a lot of cases, you're just not going to know why things went the way they were, and it's kind of unfortunate, but it's not really, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be public knowledge. It just is what it is. Um, they did, I mean, <laughs> Stephen Crowder did give, like, you know, going web, away episodes for Sun Computer and Doc A. Jared. He didn't for the, the other guy. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is. But, you know, the majority of people seem to say that Steven Crowder does, you know, he does seem like a, a pretty genuine kind of guy and he does uh, care about people. And that's why I tend to lean towards, you know, I think that he was personally hurt by what this what was given to him. Right. He was given a term sheet where he already is demonetized and has content strikes from YouTube. 
His history with YouTube is very obvious to anyone that knows anything about his channel. Daily Wire should know this because they're quote unquote friends, right? Or were. Um, <clears throat> so why they would give him a contract like that is just, I don't understand it. You know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And why people don't get that, I don't know either. It's, it is, it's just, it's just really odd that they would give him something like that and expect him to go through and, and try to fix it with lawyers when it's like they should at least personalize a contract in some way for a guy they consider to be high value and a friend. It seemed like they were just treating him like anybody else. And this is where we come to the recording, right? So, yes, he got on the phone with his so-called friend, right? And was wanting to discuss stuff and he was recording the call, which he has done. And I can understand why he did, because look what Daily Wire did. Steven Crowder didn't start off by saying, oh, the Daily Wire gave me a bad contract or a bad term sheet or a bad offer. Steven Crowder said, hey, they get, you guys gave me a bad term sheet. I don't think this is good. You need to redo it. And they said, we're not going to. And that was the end of the negotiations. And then when Steven Crowder came back, he went off and thought about it for a while. And he said this on other videos before he left the blaze. He said, a lot of these companies are not treating people the way that he thinks they should be treated. Uh, he said, you know, a lot of what's going on he doesn't like. And he said he's got to do a lot of soul searching and thinking, right? So it seems like he did that through October, November. And in December, he ended up working with Jeremy from the quartering and getting a website set up. And he got he bought a domain called Stop Big Con. And then they did put out a video saying Big Con. He didn't say who Big Con was. He didn't say Stop Big Daily Wire, Stop Big DW. He said Stop Big Con, meaning larger corporations, which I would assume he would lump like Fox News, Bl The Blaze, maybe CRTV, um, and uh, Daily Wire into. And he didn't, again, he didn't specifically call it Daily Wire. Daily Wire kind of went on damage control, I guess, and they specifically started talking about how he didn't know what he was doing. He doesn't know business. That's a flat, it's a flat out lie, honestly. Um, they're not being transparent with what they're saying. They, they've made a few lies here just from this video that, I'm, that, I'm, that I've been watching. And uh, I find it hard not to trust Steven Crowder on this one because the guy at least, I mean, he, he may have edited some of what he recorded, but when you got this guy here, basically saying, yeah, we're going to treat these people like wage slaves for a few years. And yeah, we're going to take everything they make and it's ours. Whatever. That's the way it works. It's just business. No. <laughs> no. That's just not the way. It doesn't have to work that way, but that's the way they're doing it. I don't agree with it either. So, yeah. Um, I think the Daily Wire has done a few good things. Not necessarily Daily Wire itself, but some of the people um, that are on the Daily Wire, I think they've done some good. But yeah, I, 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 I think they're way in the wrong here, honestly. I, I would say that it does, it is a little bit icky what uh, Steven Crowder did as far as uh, recording the phone call. Um, but, you know, we don't know if he, I, I don't know if he necessarily would have played that if he didn't get them to respond and say, yeah, it was us. I think he did that because he kind of expected them to do something like this. Because I think he has made up his mind to do his own thing. It seemed like he made up his mind to do his own thing earlier in December. So, yeah, I, honestly, I, I'm not going to fault him for planning things out. Uh, especially with companies with friends like these who just uh, are willing to not really give them a good deal in the first place, you know? So that's that's pretty much my take on it. You let me know in the comments. Maybe I got something wrong. Maybe you think I need to be corrected on something. By all means, let me know. I'm open to it. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Can't wait to see Stephen Crowder's interview on uh, Monday with the daily, with uh, Tim Pool. But uh, I'll see you in the next one. Until then, try not to die.